Okay, I'm gonna quickly go over some uh, gating principles with drums. Um, Gates are a bit dangerous because what you can wind up doing is actually eliminating a performance in a lot of today's uh, worship songs uh, by making your thresholds a little bit too high and uh, the drummer playing a little bit too soft. Especially with in-ears, if your church is using in-ears, if you start to use a gate, the drummer will pick up on it real quick. So if you're going to be using gates, you have to be an active mix engineer and be riding your gates, either the thresholds or the on-offs for your gates. Uh, for the quiet bits when they're riding the floor tom and stuff like that, you must be lowering your threshold or turning your gates off. Otherwise, you're just actually hindering a lot of the artistic expression that is trying to be presented from your platform. Gates are really useful uh, traditionally to get rid of some cymbal bleed for toms and stuff, but where gates really become powerful is when you have a very live room, but you really want to re retain the punch in your drums without having your room completely smear it out. So for this particular example, I'm gonna be using just the kick drum and I'm gonna kind of stay away from the toms for now. Um, the same kind of principles will apply. Um, with a kick in a very large room, all you really need is the transient, okay? You really just need that first 40 to 50, possibly 60 milliseconds of sound to get the drivers to pop and that'll push enough air in the room uh, but not have so much extra information that uh, you're continuing to ring the room. Uh, and you'll find that you'll get much more low-end control, much more definition by doing this and by actually cutting your kick drum down to just a basically an impulse. Um, you can do this uh, by retaining tone by using 45, 50 millisecond um, holds and stuff like that. So let, let's go to our kick in and let me see if I can articulate it. This recording specifically doesn't really need a lot of this because there's been a lot of control done in the recording environment, but uh, we'll try and articulate this anyway. I may go a little bit hard with my example here and extreme settings so that you get the idea. Um, but again, apply this with practice using uh, your rehearsal time or your multi-track environment to practice these um, techniques. So here's our kick in. We're gonna go over to our gate. We'll turn it on. Now I know that I only want uh, so, so much information coming through, but I want it to happen fast. So I'm gonna get my attack as fast as I can get it. I really only need about 45 milliseconds of hold because that's the transient. So that's where I'm gonna go for, about 45 milliseconds of hold. I'm gonna get this thing to let go of this kick uh, as fast as I possibly can get off of it, okay? but I don't want it to shut right off like and have a click. I'm just gonna use a 10 millisecond release, which is really fast. Okay, really fast. I'm gonna go ahead, another trick by the way, don't go all the way off, use a range, okay? The range is purely just how far the gate's gonna close. So you don't want it to go all the way off, you wanna leave some breathing room in there. 12 dB of range is, is enough to get the transient down and the rest of the information down. Uh, but still retain some good punch in your PA, okay? Winding this threshold up till it's just, hear that, okay? That's that gate getting really aggressive. Here's a trick with drums. Many people think that they need to high, uh, use a key uh, for their dynamics control that is relative to uh, the frequency of the drum. Well, that's not necessarily helpful because if your drum is very resonant, uh, anything you hit, a tom or a snare or something, may cause that resonance to, resonance to act up and open your gate and cause muddiness in your mix. What you just wanna do is get rid of rumble and get the attack to trigger the gate. So what we're gonna do, okay, is we're going to go to our Here you can see I changed this to show me the uh, key filter and key solo. So I'm gonna listen to our key solo. Okay, right now it's pretty much pretty much everything. Let's go ahead and select self. Okay. Here we go, I'm changing it to a high pass on the key. And we can go down to 
right around about 200. Okay, you notice there's not a lot changing in this for listening purposes, but this is just the key for the, the gate. Okay, right around 200. Okay. So now when other things are hitting, uh, they may not trigger the resonance of the kick drum and the gate will only trigger when the slap is coming through. So I'll go ahead and bring in this kick out and I'll do something similar. Okay, I'm gonna leave it as a gate. We're going to make it incredibly fast in the attack. We're gonna hold for about 45 milliseconds. We're gonna get off of it really fast. Okay, we're going to give it a range of about 12 dB. And we're going to get... Okay. okay, let's go ahead and do the same thing with our key here. And make it about... Key, now remember we've carved out all the top end on our kick out. The key is actually going to be taking information from before the EQ, particularly with the Behringer and the Midas consoles. So, so that's what the gate is actually hearing, which is helpful because we want it to have that attack transient to trigger on. Okay. So now that's our, that's our kick with the gate in line. Let's take it out so you can hear the difference. Much longer much poppier and shorter, okay? And like I said, this is all for acoustic reasons. This is to get your drivers to pop and move some air and then stop moving so that the air dies off quick and uh, you don't have too much uh, issues with reverb in the room messing up your drum sound and your punch, okay? For the purposes of this demonstration, we don't need to keep this in, so I'm gonna let it have its breath back, cool? Uh, just sharing my own personal experience, I gate the kick. I do not gate the snare. I do gate the toms. Um, and I use a, about a 10 dB range on them because I need the articulation if they play soft, if I don't get to the release on the gate quickly or the threshold on the gate quickly enough while I'm mixing, uh, I still want some information to come through. Additionally, your overheads will help with that. So when the drummer's playing nice and soft, uh, if you have your overheads done well, you'll still hear it if you're a bit slow getting to the gate to shut it off. Uh, I hope that helps explain gating or the way I use gating on the drums to help control a larger room and I hope it's helpful for your environment.